Deion Sanders has barely even gotten to Colorado. And um, yeah, it, it is fair to ask the question. Would he stay? And would that make it not worthwhile? Well, let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pack 12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with our beloved Conference of Champions. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, helping you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So Coach Prime has just been, he's just a presence. He just has this aura about him. He shows up at a Colorado basketball game. It's a great crowd there in Boulder because their fans are fantastic and they're going nuts. He sees them, he waves, he's dapping people up, he's there, and he's got a sweatshirt that says Prime and he's got sunglasses. He is a big time showman and I think it's great for Colorado. I do think it is fair. You can already place a wager on whether or not Deion Sanders will be Colorado's head coach in 2024 or for how long he will be there. Vegas is already thinking about it. And I think it's a fair thing to think about. I really do. Because everything I just talked about in my open translates to everything that Prime does. I don't doubt that he likes Colorado that he's excited about the opportunity, that he wants to be there, that he wants to help them win, wants to build a culture and you know get them back to where the fans would like them to be circa the 1990s. I don't doubt that. Here's what I doubt even less. That Coach Prime would turn down an opportunity to take a better job. There were plenty of reports I'd buy him personally that he was interested in the Auburn job, and Auburn went in a different direction. He's a Florida State graduate, and Mike Norvell is doing just fine this year. Got his team in the top 25, could have a 10-win season, but he's had a couple bad ones. If in two to three years, Dion has built Colorado into a winning program, and Florida State comes open, what about his career decisions and his personality lead you to believe that he would not chase a job that he deems to be higher profile. Because the appeal of Deion Sanders is simultaneously the risk of hiring him as your head football coach. He's about prime. You listen to his press conference, he's got a lot of great words, a lot of energy, a lot of reason for Buffs fans to be excited. He's already started to get some commits and recruits and bring players in via the portal and whatnot. Like, that's already underway. It will continue to evolve. But when you listen to him talk, You know a phrase that he utters all the time? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm not saying he doesn't like Colorado. I'm saying Prime likes building up the brand of Coach Prime. He's got gear that is tailored to his nickname. He walks... What other coach in the country? Nick Saban, for goodness sakes. The best coach in the history of the sport does not walk around with a moniker about himself on his sweatshirt. He is about Prime first and about the job he has in front of him second. And it doesn't mean he can't do a great job. He can because I think he was like that when he was at Jackson State. And guess what? They won a lot of football games. And he built up that brand and reputation and attention to an HBCU, just like he said he would. But when the opportunity came calling to go to a bigger platform, to go to a bigger school, He jumped at it. He did. And I think he would do it again. Even if he elevates Colorado's brand in two to three years, if an SEC job came open, if Florida State came open, if any other high-profile job, pick whichever one you want in the Power Five across the country, if they're willing to take a chance on him, I do think he would make that move. However, all of that said, that does not mean 
that this is the wrong hire for Colorado, even if that comes to pass. Because what the hiring of Deion Sanders by Colorado represents is something that has been, and Buffs fans, I'm sure will agree with this, it has been lacking year after year, decade after decade for the last 20 years. My entire life, Colorado has been good once. Am I pretty young? Yeah, sure. But I've been around a while to see programs go up and down. And for Colorado, it's been almost exclusively down. But making this move for Coach Prime represents something that Colorado has been missing and that any school needs to have a successful football program. Commitment. Commitment from the administration. A commitment, a dedication, a concerted effort to say, we want to be good at football. And they just hadn't had that. Did anybody think that when they hired Carl Durrell, who'd been out of college for a while, who had been a position coach in, in the NFL, he might have been a coordinator, I don't even remember. But did that feel like a hire that was made with the effort of, we are 100% committed to being as good as we can possibly be? Mm, no. That felt like a hire after Mel Tucker had left, by the way, where he went to a school that was willing to pay him more money and make that sort of commitment to a head coach they believe could be successful. That felt like a hire of, ah, this is okay. Yeah, like he was, yeah, like he was, he was fine. He's available. He's there, not shooting for the moon. But now Colorado, institutionally, going after Prime and pulling the trigger means that something has changed in Boulder compared to what we've seen for many, many years. There are now going to be standards, there are going to be expectations, and there is a desire. I think it's always been there from the fans because they have continued to show up at Folsom Field. But now the desire is really there and being put into action by that administration. And that's not something you can undersell. Even if Deion Sanders is at Colorado for two years, let's say he wins four games in year one, eight games in year two, Mike Norvell gets canned at Florida State, and he goes and takes that job. I am still optimistic if I'm a Colorado Buffaloes fan. Because I do believe there's no guarantee you can't see how this stuff is going to play out into the future. So many variables at stake, or in play, rather. A lot of variables in play for sure. But if that came to pass, Colorado fans would rightly be disappointed. But there is still optimism that they should have there. And that is that your administration now cares clearly more than they used to. Because they didn't want to pay Mel Tucker. They could have. I think if they had committed to paying him as much or maybe a little more than Michigan State, he's probably their head coach right now. Maybe Colorado fans would say, well, it all worked out for the better because, yeah, they got really bad with uh, Carl Durrell and the change and all that sort of stuff. But we have Deion Sanders now, and that's better than having Mel Tucker. Valid point of view. Go right ahead. But give me the college football program that wins games consistently in the country, in any conference, anywhere that does not have support and commitment from the administration and the community. And that is what this demonstrates. And even if he left in a couple of years, the next hire they would make, you'd hope would be in the same vein. It would be aggressive. It would feel optimistic. It would feel forward thinking. It would feel kind of big swingish, which is not what you want to do making that sort of high stakes wager when you're hiring jobs for a small business, because that's kind of what it feels like every day. You want to be hundred percent certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go in there, create a job post in minutes, add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates you want to attract the ones who have the right skills and experience to quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply.
just how big of an investment is this from Colorado compared to what they used to do? And it's just so stark from a few years ago. And maybe it took bottoming out this year as a 1-11, in darn near 0-12 team, if not for an overtime win at home against Cal. Thank God they got that. Nobody wants to go 0-12. Nobody deserves to go 0-12, let alone Buffs fans that have been through the ringer. Just a few years ago, Mel Tucker said, eh, more money over here. If you don't have that for me here, then I'm going to go over there. And now... Coach Prime's deal, and this is what I'm talking about with the investment and the commitment and the desire to win, is $2 million more per year than Colorado has ever paid for a football coach. It's about $5.8 million a year for five years, $29.5 million total. If he plays out the entirety of that contract, that is great for Colorado. But even if he does not, even if he bails after two years. First of all, there are two there are two things there that Colorado fans should be optimistic about if Deion Sanders bolts after a couple seasons. Number one, he will not have the option to leave you unless he starts winning games, which you have been surely missing. Number two, if he has done that in that point in time, he will have rebuilt at least somewhat the brand of Colorado football, particularly in the eyes of coaching candidates who would be interested in that position. Because for years and years and years, it has been seen, and it probably still is right now, as I'm recording this on December 11th, 2022, not one of the better Power 5 jobs in the country. But if Dion makes it a more attractive place, he's certainly already getting them far more visibility than basically any other hire could have possibly gotten if they'd hired him in this coaching carousel cycle. You got to get attention, you got to get recruits, you got to win games, and you got to have energy around a program. And Coach Prime is all about energy and all about culture. And he can do that for you. Even if he does it just for two or three or four years and it's not a 10-year ordeal, that is still a net positive if you're a Colorado. In addition to the fact that if the same people in the administration are in place, if he were to one day leave for a bigger job, they wouldn't go swinging in the little kid pool for coaches. They wouldn't go hire a you know position coach from the NFL and say, ah, well, you know, maybe this will work, or we'll just kind of hire a guy who's like, okay, and he's a nice guy, and you know, blah, 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 blah. No. To me, this potentially represents, and I suppose we'd have to wait and see, you know, a few years from now, not just how Coach Prime does, but also how, how he's treated by the administration and the boosters, which <laughs> seems to be going pretty well so far, but what sort of hire they would make after that to see if my take is correct. But Coach Prime is such a big swing. He's such a big name. I don't know how to feel any other way other than saying you now have a culture that wants to be good at football and wants to do what is necessary. And it may seem ridiculous to some. It may seem ridiculous to some. Michigan State just had what they are now considering a bad year at five and seven. And they invested in a coach who they think can make them a winning program. Also won a New Year's Six Bowl in 11 games a year ago. That's what it takes. It may be ridiculous to some people. It may be. But that is what it takes. And you have to be willing to step up to the plate and take a swing. Don't let the fear of striking out stop you from playing the game. Speaking of playing a game, Caleb Williams plays this particular game that we love, college football, at a very high level. Uh, You might even call it a Heisman level. In fact, you do call it that now. And I was really glad to see him get this award because for years, the Heisman has not always been awarded to the appropriate player. However, in the last couple of years, Heisman voters have started to move in the right direction. Devontae Smith was the best player in college football. And I think it's frustrating for 
fans sometimes to see when it's the best player that's also on the best team. USC, not the best team in the country, not one of the top four at the end of the year. But they've got the Heisman Trophy winner because the award in its purest form is given to the best player in college football, the most outstanding player in college football. And this season, that was Caleb Williams. That was 100% Caleb Williams. I would have, if I had a Heisman ballot, I wouldn't have put Stetson Bennett there, even though I think he's a really good player. I would have gone with Blake Corum or Hendon Hooker, either one, but probably Blake Corum. I would have had Caleb Williams first. I would have had Max Duggan second. I would have had Blake Corum third and probably CJ Stroud fourth. But when these awards are done correctly and given to the people most deserving, I think it's important that we as college football fans look at it and say, you know what, they got that right and good for them. Like the college football playoff this year. No complaints from me. That's who I wanted it to be. I didn't want him to put Alabama in there. I didn't think USC should have gotten in with a second loss. I didn't want to see TCU at 12-1 and one not get in, but they put him in, and they should have, and they did. And they got the four teams who have earned it the most. So when those sorts of things happen, because it's so easy to you know go on Twitter and criticize and say, this is wrong or this isn't right, or when things are not right, I certainly call them out. I call it as I see it here on the show. I, I trust you all know that for those of you that have been listening to me for a while. But giving this award to Caleb Williams is not what they it feels like they would have done in some years. And I think it helped tremendously that Caleb Williams was on USC because that's a much bigger brand than, say, Stanford. But it was eerily reminiscent of that Heisman race. You had a guy whose team was in the playoff in the national championship hunt who deserved to be a Heisman finalist in Derrick Henry, but the best player in college football that year was Christian McCaffrey. But he plays out on the West Coast. And he played a lot of games late at night. Not as many people watched him. And so he finished second when he should not have. It is the greatest Heisman snub in the history of Heisman snubs. And had Caleb Williams not won this award, it would have been another snubbery, which is a word that I might have just made up five seconds ago. Williams was so good. And I talked about it on this show really all season long as it progressed. It's like, man, Caleb Williams is ridiculous. But also... They are so reliant on him to do the spectacular. And that showed up in the Pac-12 championship game in a bad way for USC. He got a little hobbled with the injury, and the offense was not the same when he was not able to make these unbelievable jaw-dropping plays that do garner him the Heisman Trophy and put him in that discussion and thankfully got him the win this year. But that's why, to me, he was the Heisman Trophy winner, because of what that Pac-12 championship game looked like, how important he was. He was not at 100% in that game, and still had his team in contention for a while, got away from him late. But when you take away the best of Caleb Williams, USC is not at their best this season, because it's year one, and they still had a remarkable year and an amazing turnaround that has surpassed my expectations and the expectations of many others as well. That's the most outstanding player in college football. If you want Max Duggan over Caleb Williams, I get it. I'm just saying I watched a lot of Max Duggan this year. He's a great player. Deserves to be a Heisman finalist. Really glad he got it. Pulling for him in the college football playoff because I love the underdog. I TCU is the underdog of those four. They're not a big brand. They're the Cinderella story, the comeback kids who just keep finding a way to win games. But Williams was the most spectacular. He deserved to win. I'm glad he did. They got it right. Props to you, Heisman voters. I don't always think you get it right. It's one particular instance that I already talked about where you got it very, very wrong. But sometimes they get it right, and I think it's fair to point point out that that, that is that, that's what's happened this year. So the Pac-12 has got its first Heisman Trophy in, I think, eight years was Eight years, yeah, 20, yeah, I'm really amazing at math. Uh, Mariota was the last uh, Pac-12 Heisman winner. Uh, Stanford's got a new coach, and I think there's uh, a reason that, that they hired him. I think there's a very specific reason. 
I'll, I'll tell you what that is after I tell you about Simply Safe. At Locked On Pack 12, we believe the home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system. Simply Safe, of course. Right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Pack 12 listeners 40% off. 40%. Yeah, that's a lot. Off a new security system, but don't put this off. It's the best one around. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get higher priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the number one rated home security system. That's Simply Safe. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So Stanford has got its new football coach, which means there are no more vacancies in the Pac-12. The three coaches who were dismissed or stepped down from their roles this year, Carl Durrell, David Shaw, Herm Edwards, they have all had those vacancies filled by Deion Sanders, Kenny Dillingham at Arizona State, and now Troy Taylor takes the reins at Stanford. He has been the head coach at Sacramento State, which is an FCS program. They play in the Big Sky Conference, which is a really, really good FCS football conference. And for him to have won as much as he did at Sacramento State, he went 30 and 8 in his four seasons there. 30 and 8. Yeah, quite good. Three time Big Sky Coach of the Year going up against some stiff competition in that sense. Montana State was just in the FCS National Championship. Montana's really good. Eastern Washington's a story program. There are a lot of really good teams at the FCS level in that league. And he had a 30-8 record there. It's the only time he's been a Division I head coach. He's a three-time Big Sky Coach of the Year. He was a high school head coach for a long time, 73-18 record there. So the guy has won a lot. He was Utah's offensive coordinator in 2017 and 2018, and he parlayed that into the Sac State job, and now he will uh, travel a few hours down the road to Palo Alto to be the head football coach for Stanford. He was also at Eastern Washington in 2016, coached uh, Cooper Cup while he was there. So I think there's one specific reason as to why Stanford made this hire. It's the hire I would have gone with, Given the list of candidates they were considering, you know, Chris Peterson was appealing in one sense, but I always had my eye on him. And and this is why, because I thought Stanford might go in this direction because the last truly great head coach, Jim, uh, that Stanford hired was Jim Harbaugh. David Shaw has been a phenomenal football coach, but he was Jim Harbaugh's OC. So he brought him or he was on the staff. I believe he brought him with him. Like there, there were, there were a lot of guys. I think Shaw was on staff. Someone can correct me in the YouTube comments if if I'm wrong here. But Shaw was on staff, and then Roman and Harbaugh went to the NFL together. Greg Roman was the OC. Vic Fangio was the DC, by the way, on that staff. But handed the reins off to David Shaw, and he did a fantastic job for a while. He has now stepped aside. But Jim Harbaugh was a quarterback when he played. And is now a coach that, you know, is mostly on the offensive side of the ball. And, um, yeah, Troy Taylor's got that too. He was the quarterback coach at Eastern Washington in 2016. Mm. Interesting. Um, Troy Taylor also won a lot of games at an FCS program that does not have a rich history of winning. Sacramento State, go look at their football seasons. There's a lot of down years in there. And when he took it over, they were no bueno. And now, they were 12-0 and before they lost in the FCS quarterfinals. <laughs> they made a heck of a run. And they've been really good the last few years. And Jim Harbaugh went to San Diego, which also does not have a rich football winning history. But he went there, and he won a lot of games. And then he got hired at Stanford. Also, what do Sacramento and San Diego have in common? Oh, yes, they're in the state of California. I think Stanford looked at this hire and said, is that the next Jim Harbaugh right there? Quarterback background, offensive side of the ball in terms of you, you know where most of his coaching background comes from. 
and he's coaching right here in the state of California, winning at an FCS program that doesn't have a long tradition of winning. Yeah, I think this hire makes a lot of sense if you're Stanford. Will it work out? We'll see. I, I don't think there's, you know, my instinct is that this is a good hire because when I see someone go into a program at any level for college football that doesn't win and not just start winning, but start winning at a really high level, I tend to think he's going to be able to do that when he makes a jump and has more resources available. The challenging part is he's coming to a Stanford program that certainly has got plenty of money available to it, has got a good recruiting base, some of which he should be familiar with having been coaching in the state of California for the last four seasons. But the transfer portal is such a big part of college football. And this is going to be a recurring theme with regards to the Cardinal. Are they just going to fall behind because they can't admit anybody they want to fill a need on their roster because they are so committed and it's such an integral part of their identity as a school to adding guys that are men of Stanford, are of Stanford character and are of Stanford academic standards. I think that lends itself towards giving him more than just a season. This is not a Lincoln Riley turnaround. This is not, you know, Kalen DeBoer turning around Washington really quick. This is going to take longer because that roster needs a lot of help and he has to be given time. But the schematic prowess he showed at Sac State, they ran a two-quarterback system. Don't know if you can do that at the Power 5 level. Interested to see how that plays itself out. But that was also a little bit out of need, I suppose. I'm curious to see what sort of offensive system he will be running there. But I think it's a solid hire. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think he fits Stanford, right? He's not a you know super young guy. He's not like Deion Sanders to Stanford, like that never would have happened, right? It just doesn't feel, not that Coach Prime is a bad guy. I don't know him. Seems like he's a really good guy. But does he feel like Stanford? Not really. Troy Taylor seems like he's going to show up, go to work, and coach. And that's what Stanford wants. They want a guy who is a good face. They want a guy who understands what their vision is as a university who can also win football games, which is going to be a tough thing to do as a head coach of the Cardinal. But I like this hire because another finalist was Jason Garrett. Mm, no, no, not good. This is a better hire than Jason Garrett. Not saying much, but it could have been a lot worse. Overall, looks like a BB plus hire. Maybe it'll be even better than that. Who knows? A lot of teams feeling excited right now in the Pac-12 because of their new coaches, whether they're one year in, zero years in. Exciting time to be a Pac-12 football fan. Appreciate everyone listening. See you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.